We are ready to begin frying up this mountain of morsels. We have kidney, heart, spleen, liver, hanger steak. I'm going to shamelessly add more butter to the pan. I'm going to blast the heat of the oven. And you'll still get a little bit of flambe, which is just perfect. Oh, geez. Let's add some more butter. That doesn't need a thing. <laughs> That's just right. Oh yeah. And then, the other very essential part to the penetration of the brine is hanging out. So you take, what I do is I, I take all the meat out of the brine, I rinse it on the exterior with tepid water coming out of the tap and just kind of scrub it with my hands for about that long. And then I dry it thoroughly. I have I make a mountain on my table right there. Uh, of you know hams wrapped in towels basically and they're dry I dry them off that way and then once I've got that pile I'll take them out of the towel I'll net them or tie them and hang them on my rail and if it's a moist time of year I'll roll out my dehumidifier and blast them with a dehumidifier for at least one night um, to dry off the outside in preparation for smoking and then uh but why I'm saying this is you want to let them hang for a while before you cook them. Because even though they're out of the brine, the equalization is continuing. The salt that, that is, when it comes out of the brine, the salt's just on the surface of the meat. But the longer it hangs, that salt travels throughout the entire thickness of the meat. And it takes a long time. And your refrigerator is too cold to accomplish that equalization. So the equalization happens more efficiently in ambient temperatures, like my shop right now. What are we talking here? It's 51 degrees in here. It could be much warmer. It could be 65, and that would be fine. Um, and that hanging in that environment, the, brine, the, the salt will equalize throughout even a very thick ham. And it might take a while. So um, I would say for a big ham, you got a minimum of three weeks. You know, a big boneless ham is just basically one side of the leg and um, what I would do after the initial night of drying you can take it to the smoker and that will make it hang better because if your combustion is happening in the same chamber in which the meat hangs the surface of the meat is going to be very much dried out by the smoker which will enhance its ability to hang without spoiling or attracting flies so after the smoker bring it into your ambient wherever relatively fly free zone do this in the winter and hang the ham for at least three weeks and by that time you should have some pretty good equalization the salt will have penetrated all the way through and it will be a beautiful ham and if you use the eq method or the 10 percent um uh salt salinity to a liquid brine that weighs half that of the meat then uh it will not be over salty. You can just roast it right away. So I hope that is not too circuitous and detailed, Malcolm, but th that's how I would counteract the fact that it's hard to get brine to penetrate. That is, I mean, that process, the slow process of the movement of salt through meat to achieve equalization, the patience that that requires is exactly what the industrialized method of curing meat targets. Because like you say, it takes time and it's hard. You have to wait and you have to really nurture and cure and use your sensibility in making the cured meat, the ham. Um, and that doesn't, that's not suited well to industrialized production. And so what nitrite does is it penetrates the meat way faster than salt all the way through and it brings a pink color it creates the pink color so you know it's penetrating. You can see it. And it can do it under refrigeration. 
unlike salt. Consequently, all curing happens with nitrite these days. And it's not really cured, it's just flavored. But it's quick and it's pink and it doesn't require that long patience that you're talking about. <laughs>